On March 4, 1829, thousands of farmers and tradesmen who had never been to Washington, D.C. before poured into the White House. They had come to celebrate the inauguration of the first president whose life story they could identify with, Andrew Jackson. His whole family is wiped out in the revolution. He's an orphan, uh, he's angry, uh, but he decides to make something of himself and he becomes the president of the United States. It's an extraordinary career. It's what America, we like to think, is all about. To Jackson's working-class supporters, their presence at the inauguration celebration was proof that America was entering a far more democratic age. And that was precisely what worried the Washington elite. Prominent socialite Margaret Bayard Smith described how the inauguration party turned into a riot. What a scene we did witness. The majesty of the people disappeared. And a rabble, a mob, was scrambling, fighting, romping. Cut glass and china to the amount of several thousand dollars was broken in the struggle to get the punch. Ladies fainted, men were to be seen with bloody noses, and such a scene of confusion took place as is impossible to describe. Those who got in could not get out by the door again, but had to scramble out of windows. The president, after having been nearly pressed to death and almost suffocated by the people in their eagerness to shake hands with old Hickory, had to retreat through the back way. The riot deeply alarmed the Washington establishment. As men like Henry Clay saw it, Jackson's motley supporters had demonstrated why the Founding Fathers had not trusted the masses to choose the president. Now Clay and his allies worried that Jackson, a man famous for his dictatorial disposition, would use the support of this same mindless mob to turn himself into America's first imperial president. It's hard for us to imagine how much that generation worried that a republic could so easily be taken over by a strong man, by a military chieftain, by an emperor. Napoleon, of course, had just recently done that in France. Henry Clay was convinced that King Andrew was the farthest thing from the deliberative statesman that a republic required, that he was, in fact, a dangerous, egomaniacal, potential emperor. 